Oh, so then the this one is our advice to adults. So what we would recommend to the adults who are trying like to do all the things we're talking about. So and I'll, I'll just interject. Yeah. I apologize. I think this is a part of the the question. The um, how young people would prefer for adults to co help them to connect with nature and um, to partner with them at, in in ways that feel respectful. Uh, so youth should share the expectations with adults, usually um, usually just in anywhere, in classrooms, mm -hmm. in any setting, the adults are, they sit down and they tell us what they want from us. Um, but I think another part of the conversation is what we want from them, like what we yeah. want to get out of the program or whatever activity that we're in. So part of that is just listening to us talking less, and, like, being there as a resource for us. Um, adults should invite youth to join leadership opportunities. Um, so mainly a lot of the activities and programs that Aliyah and I are involved in um, are because um, adults do send us emails, and they encourage us to sign up for opportunities. So... Oh, okay. Okay, looks sounds like we can take some more questions now. I'm just trying to look here and see. Um, if we want to say anything more about how to connect with young people. If you could share your favorite ways to connect in nature, I think the group was involved or interested in that. Oh, my way or mm -hmm. yeah. Um I like I said I'm a part of a garden and I never imagined myself being the type of person to go outside and you know plant stuff but um this summer I've taken it I've enjoyed gardening a lot I've learned a, a lot of new things and um I think everybody should you know some way or another be involved in nature cuz it's it's a pretty cool thing yeah the garden for me and then also uh just um, over the summer, I've gotten opportunities mm -hmm. to like go out and like um, learn specific things. Like with JF, we went to the river and we did stuff with that. <laughs> and um, camping, backpacking, mm -hmm. just those things. And half of those were like what I did in school. So. Yeah, I took a side because when we were setting up. Uh, we had a, a brief conversation about um, how Aaliyah has experienced um, nature and being outdoors. Yeah. And and it seemed like a very different experience when she had an opportunity to choose um, as a part of a work program that she was in as a green team member at Groundwork Denver. She had an opportunity to to go and be in nature and the outdoors, I think there was an expectation, but it was professional. Um, it felt like work, but there was some fun built into that as a part of this is what Groundwork Denver does and why it's important to do the work that you do. And it sounded as though those were um, memorable experiences for her. At the mm -hmm. same time, she has had attended a school that used expeditionary learning as a, a major approach to engaging young people in their own learning and leadership. And it's different if there's a different experience when it's, it sounds like, mm -hmm. please do correct me, yeah. it sounds like the experience is different when it's an obligation mm -hmm. or when it's um, tied to uh academics in a way that feels like it's more structured and mandated. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to choose my words yeah. more wisely because I think the both experiences are um, important or have been important in shaping and developing you as a young person who can sit here today and talk about EE. But it's it was kind of fascinating to hear um, that 
it felt different. It was experienced mm-hmm. different. There was a lot more energy and like, oh, when I work for this organization versus like when I, which was groundwork, um, groundwork screen team versus like, oh, when it was school. Mm-hmm. And so I think and when we're talking about how to connect with young people around EE, we need to acknowledge where they are starting from. So getting out, hiking, backpacking, that wasn't really new to you. Right. But you got some opportunities to do that in a way that felt like it was a lot more empowering probably for, sure. for groundwork um, green team. So I think that's a, something to keep in mind when we say um, – I have my own ideas about what young people need to do and how to connect them to nature, but I want to know what they think is really acknowledging where the, where's their starting point is out. And also having young people help us define what is nature because some of the messaging that young people get, this is an old person talking, so I want <laughs> you to be like, well, it's not, you know, interject. Mm-hmm. But some of the messages that young people get, especially in some of the communities that I work in, are, is that nature and outdoors is reserved for someone else, and it's not them, and they don't see people who look like them. And you've seen that theme come up in a couple of slides. They don't see people who look like them participating in some of these activities that we're trying to say, this is good for you, you should do it as adults. So. If you have more to say about yeah. that, I'm, I want to learn even more about that because um, I know I push it on my own kids. Yeah. But but I, I wanna I wanna I want like this person who commented to understand how to. And so what I have learned with um, some of the my outdoor Colorado work with Westwood and Cole inspired communities is that it's really about defining outdoors and nature with community with young people um one of the things you said was like the difference and it's like nobody i mean just for anybody nobody wants to do what they don't want to do <laughs> so um being at school there when my school was like hey we're gonna go backpacking for two weeks and you're gonna keep a leadership journal and you're gonna have fun i was like it's like it's forcing you it on you for why <laughs> why yeah. what's the point but when I got to specifically, like, see what we were going to do every day and why it was important, and not even – nobody really had to tell me why it was important. I just had to go through it myself, and it was something that I look back on now, and I'm like, I would totally um, tell somebody else about that or I would totally do it again and help out more with it because it's something that I like. Not that I didn't like it at school because, like, that, I mean, it was fine. Like, I had, like, some fun for a day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, you know, it's just that difference of just being, like, being thrown a list of clothes mm-hmm. to bring and mm-hmm. um, going off on a bus and instead of, you know, like, really understanding, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, at school, I didn't understand why I was doing it. I just thought, okay, why am I outside? Mm -hmm. But then it's like uh, when I got to do it for myself, I was like, this is why we need to be involved in environmental education. Like, this is the reason. Yeah. When you can pass that on. Yeah. I think, um, like you said, like not knowing why. I think that's why a lot of people aren't involved in environmental education. And um, also, you know, they don't see people like them out there. So I think um, it's kind of our job to step up and at least be the first person to go out there and then tell more people about it so more people yeah. will join and hopefully you'll see more people like yourself out there. Yeah, I mean, like, I no, I didn't grow up. Right, I didn't, I didn't grow up. Yeah. The weekend. <laughs> I didn't grow up gardening. So <laughs> I didn't, it was just kind of just brought to me. So but it's, like, nice to yeah. be like, hey. I know how to backpack. Right. Like, I know how to plant a zucchini. You guys should join me. Plant a zucchini. Not really, but I'm getting there. But. Great. Uh, there was another question from participants asking if you could give an example of how you, uh, how adults can provide structure and be organized, which mm-hmm. was something that you mentioned in the beginning. Mm-hmm. 
Um, well, I think there needs to be, like, a goal. Yeah. You know? So, if, like, for example, the community garden, the goal is to have youth involved and run that garden, you know, and have, like, the responsibilities going. Mm-hmm. So, when we first started, we knew, like, we need to get youth involved. That's the goal. So, what steps, what's A, B, and C to get youth involved in yeah. the garden? So, now, how many, like, young kids do we have in the garden? We have, like, what, like, six or seven? Seven, I think. Seven. So it's like having that goal and then giving us the supplies to do it. So not necessarily like taking over it, it, just, you know. Right, like not telling us how, but being like, hey, why don't you use this, for example. Like even like we're planning a retreat right now. Mm -hmm. And so the director like sent us a list of like Mm -hmm. we knew like the goal is to have this retreat at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So we got a list of the people who we need to contact. We got a list of, like, the spaces or, like, the areas that we need to be in in an email. And and the director was like, form this retreat thing. So, I mean, she didn't tell us how to do it. It's more of just handing us the materials and then giving us the goal, and then we'll figure it out from there. And, like, adults can always be there as a resource. Yeah. But we don't need to be micromanaged. Mm. Let us explore and make our decisions. Like, we, nobody needs to hold our hand and tell us how to do it. If you're going to do that, just, I mean, why do we need to be there? Right. I would like to point out that these two young people have had varied experiences. When I was 16, I needed a, a list, a checklist. Right. A toolbox. <laughs> but, but, I mean, but I, my spirit was such that I can identify with you. Like, let us do it. So, yeah. so other things that adults can do that are practical to really support young people at different levels um, is uh, get to know your youth, right? Mm -hmm. Get to understand their experiences and accomplishments. Um, Give them time. Like strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, assess their strengths and weaknesses. Um, Or what they like. Yeah, Um, know them. And also yeah. what they want to get out of the experience. Yeah. And if it's just I'm sitting here to have fun, okay, then too. But then there are checklists. Um, as far as adults being organized, I I think young people would appreciate knowing what the goal of the day's meeting is about and what we want to get out of it and focusing mm-hmm. on that. Yeah. Um, creating opportunities for young people to give meaningful feedback, like the time I sat in on you all. Um, talking to a lady from Teach for America mm-hmm. and giving some feedback there about how to really um, help educators support young people in ways that were important. I think getting to know like the person is really important too. Yeah. Because like Maybe if you know like, the relationship. Yeah. Like if you know me and you know I like to like talk in public and then you know you who's like I'd rather like do something else like right. why would you stick me behind when I don't like to do that mm-hmm. and like yeah. Yeah. Person, you know? yeah one more question from a participant is um, when you when youth are not familiar with outdoor activities what are some strategies that adults can use to help introduce them to those things without taking over um, I feel like there should be, like, a way to spark that person's interest. So, like, Ali and I are involved in SCFD, which is um, Scientific Cultural Facilities District, and we joined because within um, that program, there's something that we are involved in. So, um, Alia is involved in music, is it? She's involved in music um, because that's something that's really important to her. And um, I'm involved in cultural history because that is something Mm -hmm. that I'm involved in. But I think finding a way to spark somebody's interest and then kind of incorporating that with educational environment, Mm -hmm. that that definitely works. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of like, hey, if you like to plant, yeah. Let's plant some trees. Or, I don't know, that's just an example. But yeah, yeah. And, and sometimes I, what we're finding is that um, families and young people with the go, the Great Outdoor Colorado, My Outdoor Colorado work, is that 
people don't know what they don't know. Like, how do you know you don't like backpacking unless you get an opportunity to go? Go. And maybe, um, so one of the strategies we've tried with young people in um, Cole neighborhood and Westwood neighborhood is to give them uh, a local experience in camping. So they went to Greenway. To The Greenway Foundation has um, Johnson Habitat Park. And it was just overnight, but there's tents. It's a, it's a real camping experience, but mm-hmm. it's, what, 20 minutes away from home. Yeah. Um, they also had an experience at the History Colorado Center where they were actually in um, uh, an exhibit area that looked like the place where they would be going, which mm-hmm. was a little bit out of the way. It yeah. was kind of like far away. Yes, because if you don't like or if you don't know, you don't, don't like backpacking. Packing, don't make somebody go on a three-week backpacking. Right. Yeah. So kind of um, gradual steps at immersing almost. Well, maybe it's not immersion, full immersion, but it's these gradual steps that lead to um, bigger and bigger uh, steps, opportunities, um, levels of satisfaction in, in getting outdoors and in nature. So it in a thoughtful way, because sometimes folks don't know what they really like and they don't like. And then the last thing I would say about that is understanding the barriers to that activity. We live in Colorado. I think skiing is great. I'm an old person, and I only think that is great because my kids do it. Mm-hmm. And they enjoy it. I mean, I don't have an experience to share. Mm-hmm. And some of those barriers could be just knowledge of how do I get the equipment and how do I get there and what's the, the situation? Do I rent the equipment here? Do I rent it there? Just kind of understanding processes, understanding some of those constraints um, for people helps us to, to bridge some of those gaps.